Your call is very important to us. Please stay on the line. Welcome to, or welcome back to uh, Tuesday Bro Tuesday. You know, this used to be a live call-in show, and I don't know why I still keep mentioning that, because it's not anymore. Now, what we do is we talk about and unpack the news as it relates to vaping, as it relates to tobacco harm reduction, as it relates to liberty. I try, uh, we sometimes get a little bit political on this show, but I try to avoid a lot of divisive political talk. I'll say this all the time. I'm a freedom guy. I'm a registered libertarian. So that's the lens that all of this, all of this gets viewed through. But welcome. Welcome, you guys. As you can tell by the thumbnail, we're going to be talking about Australia today. Australia and uh, everyone's favorite new guy, Greg Hunt everyone's favorite new guy. The first thing we have to do is give a shout out to KC Vapes. Just saw that in the chat, so we're gonna give a quick shout out to KC Vapes. Thank you guys for being here. Addy Tooney, all my moderators. Addy Tooney, British Eyes, I think I saw you there. Angela Garrity, I definitely saw you there. Legion Vapes, I see you there. Disco Potato, thank you guys for being here. Thank you so much for being here, you guys. Bearded Viking Customs, hell yeah, thank you for being here. And not, not I don't wanna say most of all, but definitely high up on the list, Breeze Tones. Thank you, Breeze Tones, for being here. Breeze Tones has really, in a, in a seriously severe way, stepped up. Stepped up into just this advocacy role. Breeze Tones is a builder in, uh, in Australia. Uh, we had a nicotine prescription update uh, with Breeze Tones not too long ago in the vlog. And it seems like all of that doesn't even matter anymore. It just seems like all of that doesn't even matter anymore because of what just happened in Australia. So obviously we're going to be, oh, sorry, I just ate chili for lunch. So I have a little bit, I have some quinoa shaken loose. Got some quinoa shaken loose. And that's a weird sentence that I never thought I'd say. But there's a lot going on. We're going to talk a bit about uh, Australia. In fact, we're going to spend the majority of this time today talking about Australia, what happened, why it happened, and what can possibly be done about it? Um, I want to give a shout out to Jay Hayes. I know he streamed and talked about Australia. I want to give a shout out to DIY or Die. Uh, Wayne, I saw him this morning streaming about Australia as well. Um, I know Bogan did a video. The only critique I have for Bogan is don't say that you're, we're fucked. Stop saying that. That's a, that should be removed from the vernacular. Any, anytime some vape legislation happens, people, are always, people always just throw their arms up and go, well, we're fucked. That's the, that's, the, that's the wrong attitude to have. And I understand it feels like that. But what you want to put on your thumbnail is maybe something like, let's fight back. Let's organize and let's fight back. And let's not let these horribly corrupt politicians get away with being horribly corrupt. I realize all that doesn't exactly fit on one thumbnail. But I hate that. I hate that we're fucked mentality. I love you, Bogan, and thank you for your video. Thank you to anybody that has been talking about this on YouTube. I have seen Australian vapors coming out of the woodwork on Twitter, very much in the same way back in 2019, towards the end of 2019, when Donald Trump was talking about banning flavors and the CDC was in mis misinforming people with Ivali, which Mission accomplished. They definitely misinformed a lot of people. Got into a nice little Twitter war just yesterday with someone who was convinced that it was flavored liquid nicotine products that had been killing people. Even sent me news articles. And I said, hey, you might want to read that news article just a, li just a little bit. Uh, vaping with super clouds. Hi, uh, Nick. Can you please draw everyone's attention to the current Australian problem with Greg Hunt? Yeah. I mean, that's what we're doing this whole stream, <laughs> that this whole stream is dedicated to that. So yes, 
Of course we're going to do that. Of course we're going to do that. 100% of course we're going to do that. I forgot something and I can't believe, I can't believe I forgot this. And now I have no way to add it in because OBS sucks so many butts. But I did a survey, I did a survey on my YouTube. I did a survey on my YouTube, um, kind of posing the same question, you know, what would happen, you know, what would, what would you do if this happened in the United States? I posed this question um, in a post on YouTube and I would share the picture with you, with you, but like I said, OBS sucks butts and I can't add a new, uh, oh, here I can. Oh, I can. Let's add an image, baby. Let's add an image. Let's add an image. I promise this isn't going to be all just bad news, doom and gloom. It sucks right now what they've just done uh, in Australia. It sucks 100%. There's the survey. Look at this survey. So I posed this question and maybe I didn't pose the question very well. And I also realized that two of the answers that you could have chosen were very, very similar. Um, as far as I can understand, let's see where this started. As far as I can understand, what happened in Australia is Greg Hunt just pro prohibited straight up prohibition of nicotine, but not, they worded it in such a way that it's nicotine in a solution, right? Nicotine in a solution, mean, strictly meaning e-liquid, electronic cigarette, e-liquid. And I hate all of that terminology. I hate the term e-liquid. I hate the term, I hate the term uh, electronic cigarette. It's just the worst thing ever. And so if you are an Australian resident and you go on a website and you buy a bottle of e-liquid and that website ships you that bottle of e-liquid and it gets caught by customs at the border, then you, the consumer, you get charged a fine of Two, over $200,000, $220,000, which just seems like such a weird arbitrary number. It seems like such a weird arbitrary number, $220,000, why not? I mean, why stop there? Why not just half a million dollars, a million, two million dollars? If you get caught, two million dollars, we just wanna ruin you financially. $200,000 would ruin anybody financially. Maybe not Jeff Bezos or Oprah Winfrey or something like that, but it would ruin everybody. That would ruin me financially just because you wanted a less harmful alternative to deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes, which by the way, are, are exempt from this. Import all the cigarettes you want, buy all the cigarettes you want, they made a, a very specific to nicotine in a solution. So that excludes things like deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes. That excludes things like every NRT, so patches, gums, every pharmaceutical made NRT, patches, gums, things like that are, are excluded, excluded as well. The official, Austra we're just jumping right into it, the official Australian government website said evidence suggests that the use of e-cigarettes by non-smoking youths predicts future uptake in smoking. Yeah, that's on the government website. The Australian government website is citing a study that was done in the United States by Uncle Touchy Stunt Stanton Glantz that also is in dire need of being retracted. And that's not just me saying, ah, oh, it needs to be retracted. That's, uh, that's Brad Rodu saying that it needs to be retracted, that this is garbage science. So right out of the gate, Greg Hunt is basing all of this on just garbage, garbage science. Garbage, garbage science. Uh, Saint of the Sinners is also telling me it can be up to two years in jail. Two, two years in jail or a $220,000 fine. Now that's Australian $220,000. That translates to about $110,000 in the United States. And that's why I posed this question to my subscribers on YouTube. And I asked, if the US government threatened to fine you $110,000 for possessing nicotine, would you, A, fuck the state, I'll vape anyway. Two, that's actually scary, I would have to quit. C, 
I would probably smoke cigarettes again to get nicotine. And then F, the last question or the last answer, I would go to the unregulated black market. That's kind of goes along with the first one. You know, fuck the state, I'll vape anyway. If you were to fuck the state and vape anyway, you would have to kind of go to the unregulated black market. And the survey results were such as, damn, 72% of you said even in the face of a $110,000 fine, $110,000 $110,000 fine, fuck the state, you would vape anyway right off of the black market. Only 5%, this is about 2,000 people voted on this. 5% said, that's actually scary, I would have to quit. 8% said they would go back to de- the known killer of deadly, deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes. And then 15% said go to the unregulated black market, but that's kind of, that, that, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna count that into the original answer. So the original answer wasn't 72%, it was more like, oh, I'm gonna have to do some math A in my head. 87% said, fuck the state, I'll vape anyway through the unregulated black market. The thing is, that's a possibility in the United States, but that doesn't seem like it's an option in Australia, because they're stopping it, it's importing. You get this fine if you import it. Australia relies on tobacco taxes. The world relies on tobacco taxes. And this is something, this is something that I've, I've ranted about before, but when you ha- why is there a financial, why, I get it, like, we know that raising cigarette taxes doesn't work to curb smoking. It just doesn't. What we found is that people will just continue to spend money to smoke cigarettes. And in Australia, it's even worse. They have aggressive, aggressive cigarette taxes in Australia. I don't know if anybody can answer me this in the chat. Maybe Breeze Tones. I'm going to be relying on you a little bit today. How much is a pack of cigarettes in Australia? How much? I've heard it's anywhere from... Like $25 to $35 for a pack of cigarettes? Is my information accurate there? I don't know how much a pack of cigarettes costs in Australia, but they have some of the highest, yeah, some of the highest tobacco taxes in the world in Australia. Some of the highest tobacco taxes in the world in Australia and what they find, and this is broadly available. I mean, this is science all over. $30. A pack of smokes is $40. Someone said 30, someone said 40, so between 30 and 45. Easy Mode in the chat says $45 for a pack of 30. $45 for a pack of cigarettes. (laughs) And has their smoking rate outside of vaping decreased like over the last decade before vaping existed? You know, I posted a tweet on Twitter that said, uh, if any government out there thinks that their low smoking rates is due to anything other than vaping nicotine, they are out of their minds, out of their minds. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say, Katie. We can get a pack of cigarettes. I can get a pack of cigarettes in California for like eight, nine bucks. Eight, nine bucks, $40 for a pack of cigarettes. 90% is taxes. You mean to tell me that the government isn't missing that money? If the government is getting 90%, uh, I mean, if the government is getting $40 in taxes per pack of cigarettes, what is the government's motivation to actually try to end smoking in their country or actually try to end smoking in their state? They have no motivation to do that because if they actually do that, if they actually tackle smoking, if they actually reduce the smoking rates, they'll just lose that money. They're just gonna lose that paycheck. The government has no motivation to get smokers to quit because money, because 100% money. This can't be seen as anything else other than we're losing money, we need to recoup this money. It's the same thing that we've seen in the United States and in states like New York, in states like Idaho, uh, uh, Ohio. I said Idaho. That's not even a state. Idaho? Maybe it should be. Can we get a 50-second state, Idaho? I'll join. Ohio, Washington, California. 
MSA tobacco bonds are about to be defaulted on and states are scrambling to get that money back. And the only way that they're going to get that money back is to get people smoking cigarettes again or tax the crap out of vaping products. It's never been about public health. If, if, we're, if we're to believe that Greg Hunt MP is this is anything other than money, you're, you're crazy. New Jersey, yeah, New Jersey. You know, and I, I know New Jersey's included in that, and I always bring up New York and California first because they're the first, New York is going to be the first that could possibly default on these bonds. They're gonna be the first that could possibly default on these bonds. So it's obviously, obviously about money. They're the, on the official Australian government website, they are, they are using the, uh, the gateway argument the gateway argument that if a non-smoking, non-vaping youth picks up vaping, that they'll become cigarette smokers. So we should ban what stops them to become cigarette smokers without harming cigarettes. You know, we can't, we couldn't possibly take, and that's the thing, cigarettes will never be off of the market. Good. Cigarettes will never be off of the market. It's too much money. State and country budgets fiscally could not withstand banning cigarettes, which is why they will never touch cigarettes. They have a lot of information on this uh, official government uh, of Australia website. Um, will I still be able to get e-cigarettes? That's the big question, right? Will I still be able to get e-cigarettes? If both you and your doctor believe that the use of nicotine e-cigarettes can help you stop smoking, then you can still access the products with appropriate medical supervision. So, even by saying that, they're kind of admitting that nicotine e-cigarettes can help you stop smoking. If you and your doctor believe that this will help you stop smoking, isn't that just admitting that nicotine cigarettes, nicotine cigarettes, good Lord, nicotine e-cigarettes, vapor products, harm reduction products, you're gonna need a prescription from your doctor. We've talked about this from Breeze Tones. You're gonna to need a prescription from your doctor. Um, the problem is with that, and this is what I was reading from Colin Mendelson on Twitter, and I apologize, there's just so much information all over the place, all over the place, that I'm gonna be going back and forth between like my phone, my computer, there's just information all over the place, and I'm gonna to try to get you as much of information as I possibly can, as well as actions that everybody can take, actions that not just everybody in Australia can take, although I feel like it has to be limited to Australia. I don't know what I can do other than what I'm doing right now. Like, I can't call Greg Hunt and say, hey, I live in California, but what you're, do <laughs> you know, what you're doing in Australia is criminal. The problem with, here's a tweet from Colin Mendelson. Um, uh, the health department of Gov uh, the health department of Australia says pharmacists may dispense uh, e nicotine e liquid if the user already has a prescription. However, pharmacies cannot obtain or use nicotine liquid without the approval of state health departments, and state health departments are not giving that approval. So that's the way that it's working out. You need to a get a prescription, b go to your doctor and have him prescribe you nicotine, but then your doctor has to get approval from the state health department, and the state health department is not giving any approvals out. How do you see this as any other way than they want you to keep smoking tobacco cigarettes? How is this not clearly an anti-vaping agenda? Clearly an anti-vaping agenda. If you've been using non-nicotine containing e-cigarettes you can locally purchase, or Alternatively, you can import e-cigarettes which do not contain nicotine. Now, there's so much nuance to this. There's so much nuance to this. I have so many questions for the, for the Australian government. Do, do, are they aware of the difference between like open and closed vapor systems? Are they trying to target pods with this? Are they trying to target not getting nicotine through pods, like pre-filled pods? They don't. They don't say. It is too much red tape, Lee. That's part of the problem is it's so much red tape. What, there's no smoker in Australia. There's no smoker in Australia that is gonna jump through this many hoops just to vape. There's probably not 
many vapors in Australia that are going to jump through this many hoops to vape. Thankfully, if you can get uh, chewing tobacco or you can get snooze pouches, you can make your own e-liquid with nicotine in it. You, you can do that. There's, there's videos on YouTube. I'm not going to mention that and I'm not going to link to the videos, but there are, uh, there are videos that show you how to do that. So this goes into effect on July 1st. So, you know, soon. Was that a week away? Isn't that about a week away? Starting on July, sorry, I misspoke. It's not June 1st, it's July 1st. Starting on July 1st, 2020, that's it. That's the day. After July 1st, 2020, if you try to import nicotine, sorry, bro, $220,000 fine. Um, someone forwarded me an email from Mo at Vaporize who had basically had to send out, now Vaporize is the distro in New Zealand, like the biggest distro in New Zealand. It's where the majority of Australians get their nicotine from is in New Zealand because for now, New Zealand is a little bit embracing tobacco harm reduction, although not completely. There's some bad stuff coming for New Zealand as well. I know, right, Sergio? 2020, the best year, the best year. Oh, well, thank you so much, Truck and Vapes. Hang on, I'm gonna get to that super chat in just a second. Um, Mo from Vaporize, shout out to Vaporize. He had to send out an email to all of his customers saying, look, here's what's happening. After July 1st, 2020, we will not be able to ship anything to Australia. We just won't. And that's heartbreaking, not only for the vapors in Australia who can't get their e-liquids now, but for all of the smokers in Australia who are going to have now more red, you know, red tape and hoops to jump through to get their nicotine and honestly for Vaporize as a company when that much of your customers are cut off, how is Vaporize supposed to continue doing business? How how are they supposed to stay in business with that much of their consumer base just completely cut off? It's 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 insane. It's insane what's going on. It's insane what's going on. So um, I'm gonna have a whole mess of links down in the description. And I'm not sure if uh, Jeremy V is here. Timestamps today are gonna be just a nightmare because I'm gonna be kind of all over the place. If you can disseminate any sort of timestamps, then please do. But if you can't, I completely understand. The whole thing's just gonna be about Australia, except for the very end, I got a little bit of good news. I've got a hair of good news, a little bit of good news coming out of the United States. Um, but this was the first thing posted on Othra.org. This is the Australian Tobacco Harm Reduction Association. And they basically go over the whole thing. Many vapors will go back to smoking. Smokers will be denied access to legitimate quitting aids. Vapors who try to import nicotine from July 1st will be fined $220,000 in fines. Or apparently now, as we've learned, up to two years in prison. Yeah, I've never said this before. I've never given this advice before because I always think it's better to fight than to give up and stock up. But if you're in Australia right now and you wanna keep vaping, stock up. Stock the F up. I think uh, I just saw in my YouTube notifications, Bogan did a, a video about how to store nicotine long-term, how to store your e-liquids long-term. Stock up. And really the insult to injury, I think, with what's going on in Australia right now is the idea that, oh, well, it's only gonna be a year while an ethics committee, right? No, no one from public health, no doctors or anything, an ethics committee is going to decide how to proceed after this. That's just kicking you when you're down. That's just kicking you when you're down. This is gonna go on for a year. It kind of gives you that, well, maybe there'll be some hope. You know, After a year, maybe they'll reevaluate. Maybe they'll see, okay, tobacco harm reduction. These are actually getting people off of cigarettes. Look at the UK, you know, look at Japan. Look at other countries in, you know, in, in the United, or in the, uh, in the European Union. Or they'll just say, no, uh, it's permanent now. Permanently. Permanently ban nicotine e-liquids permanently. 
Sorry, Australians. Sorry, all of the smokers in Australia. You're just going to have to smoke because money. Because because we need money. Because Australia needs money. Under the new guidelines, uh, importation of nicotine for vaping involves an erroneous and complicated process requiring a doctor's prescription, special applications, and importation procedures. Under these new laws, vapors are no longer to, no longer able to import nicotine e-liquids for their own personal use. Only medical suppliers or pharmacists can import nicotine with permission granted by the health department. Many will have no choice but to go back to smoking or to access nicotine through unregulated black market supplies, which are bound to step in and fill the gap. I don't doubt that that's absolutely what's going to happen. It's going to be expensive, but no one's saying that, you know, there's not going to be a a very thriving black market of e-liquid in Australia. All it takes is, hey, I set up a Discord I'm um, selling e-liquid. It's a uh, hundred dollars a bottle. <laughs> you know, three hundred dollars a bottle if you want some. Uh, Four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars a bottle if you want some one hundred milligram to mix with your zero milligram, which is still legal. Which, by the way, cigarettes are are still freely and widely available. Ethics committee, Daniel. Ethics committee. That is the. That's, I mean. Granted, I'm only seven chapters into George Orwell's 1984 for the first time, but God damn it, ethics committee? I'm surprised they're just not naming it the Ministry of Ethics. <laughs> the Ministry of Ethics. Yeah, Ministry of Ethics. Anyway, all I have today is a rise bar. That's fine. So that's where we're at. That's where we're at right now with Australia. I have some things I wanted to share with you, though have some things I wanted to share with you. What happens if I go back? Oh, no, we're not going to go there quite yet. Um, uh, There was uh, a radio interview done with our our favorite guy, uh, Greg Hunt. And so I'm going to play that for you right now. But the first thing I'm going to do is kill my microphone so that we can listen to it. And there's going to be two listening segments. Um, Actually, real quick, before we get to listen to these, which it'll just make us rage further a thousand times more than we're already raging um let's do a couple of these uh super chats don't have the super chat bumper that's okay ranger man 9404 please reach out to youtuber irish demon he's not a vape channel but he's in a a vapor in australia looking for advice irish demon all right here we're gonna search google for irish demon let's search for irish demon youtube there he is Okay, gaming with the Irish demon. All right, I, I will. I'll, I'll reach out to him. I'll leave comments on his videos. I'll say, hey, hit me up. I'll, I'll try to help this guy as much as I can. Uh, maybe if he has a big enough audience, maybe he can help get the word out. Thank you, Ian. Thank you for reminding me. Everybody stay hydrated. Uh, I appreciate that, Ranger Man. Mick Kerr, very gracious of you. Cheers for Australia for helping us bring this to light. Yeah, you know, I I, I couldn't not do it. I mean, corruption is corruption no matter what country you live in. Um, Similar things are happening in Indonesia. Similar things are happening all over the world right now. And access to harm reduction uh, should be a human right. You should... It should be a human right to attempt to reduce the harm in your life. And I don't know why harm reduction is such a a, a difficult concept for the majority of people to grasp, especially it seems like politicians and lawmakers and tobacco controllers just don't get it. They just don't understand harm reduction. There's, we use so much harm reduction every single day. You ever go out in the sun and you think, well, I don't want to get sunburned, put on some sunscreen, fucking harm reduction. That's harm reduction. You ever get on your bicycle and you think, oh, I don't want my head to hit the pavement, explode everywhere, smells bad. Oh, put on a helmet. Harm reduction. We don't ban bicycles. We tell people to use the bicycle safely. Put on a helmet. Airbags in cars, seat belts, harm reduction. Something as simple as putting on shoes. You ever go outside and it's, you know, whatever, dirt, sticks, pointy rocks, and you think, I'm not going to walk on that with my bare feet. I'm going to put on shoes. I'm going to reduce the harm to my feet that the ground is giving me by putting on shoes. Hi, harm reduction. 
Harm reduction. It's really not that difficult concept to grasp. Oh, look, smokers. Yeah. Now you can get your nicotine with at least 95% less harm. If there was a product that reduced the risk of, you know, childbirth by 95%, it would be embraced the world over. It would be heralded as a medical miracle. But now we have a product that reduces the harm of cigarettes up to maybe even a little bit more than 95%. Nope. Kids, <laughs> kids might use it. <laughs> Kids might use it. Kids might use it. Uh, anyway, I appreciate that, Mick Kerr. I'm trying not to get off on too many tangents here. Red Gorilla, very gracious of you. Yes, save Australian clouds. I apologize. I don't know what time it is right now in Australia. Didn't even think about that before I started this stream. Maybe should have. Maybe should have. Nah, maybe should have thought of that before I started streaming about Australia. That's okay. That's okay. Save Australian clouds. Uh, Mick Kerr, one more time. I meant cheers from Australia. I got you. I, I knew that you didn't mean cheers fork Australia, although the cheers fork Australia, I, that's kind of cool. <laughs> it sounds like a restaurant. Where are you going tonight for dinner? Uh, I, was, I was thinking about going to the cheers fork. Any good? Mm. I mean, it's food. Cheers fork. Someone open a restaurant in Australia called cheers fork, please. Discount zero too, very gracious of you. Like that smash button, y'all. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, discount zero too. Thank you for reminding me. I never tell anyone to hit the like button. It, oh, it's 9 a.m. there? Oh, you guys are good. You guys are good. It's 9 a.m. in Australia. Pfft. Totally, totally 9 a.m. in Australia. You guys are good to go. Good to go. Like that smash button, guys. Uh, if you want to hit that like button, it would help me out a lot. Although I'm not going to boss you around. I'm not the boss of you. I'm all about uh, bodily autonomy, freedom, and liberty. If you don't want to smash that like button, you don't have to. Ranger Man, 9404, ever notice that the higher the tax on cigarettes, the tougher the vape laws? Yeah, that is interesting how they kind of do go hand in hand like that. Why would that be? Why would that be? Could it be that the government is just addicted to that cigarette tax money? They, they use cigarette tax money not for, you know, smoking prevention programs or awareness programs or anything like that. They don't even, states in America don't even use MSA money for what it's intended to. They use it to build golf courses or suspension bridges. They don't even use it what it's intended for. We don't have a ta we have a taxing problem in the United States. We have a spending problem in the United States. Spending problem in the United States. Discount zero two cigarettes kill people, but so what? I know. Shoot, I for I even forgot to uh, I even forgot to mention our sponsor this week. As if we even needed to get more ragey. Uh, I'm sorry, we do have to hear from our sponsor. This entire YouTube has a sponsor now, and it's the law. I think it's a, I have to play this video. Vaping is better than smoking. Technically, yes, but so what? So what? You guys, so what? Cigarettes kill people, discount zero two, but so what? Light, light bearer? Nick, couldn't we put the pressure on the tourism department? I mean, yes, you definitely could. I don't know, I don't know what that looks like. I don't know how, I don't know. I don't know what that looks like. I know that, I mean, I, I, as an outsider of Australia, I could definitely contact the tourism department and say, hey, you know, I was planning a big trip to, uh, to Australia. You know, I was gonna hang out with my friend, the, the Vape and Bogan in Australia, uh, but your crazy Greg Hunt MP who just banned uh, nicotine in the country um, I don't want to go to your country anymore. So I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm canceling my trip to Australia. That could be a way to do it. Look, I've always said this, use every tool in your arsenal. Use every tool that we have available to us and use them frequently. That's what we're going to be talking about. Uh, apart from getting angry is what, what can we do? What are we going to do? There's some things we can do. There's some things we can do. Please do not lose hope. Please do not say we're fucked. Please say nobody's fucked. Please say, let's do something now. Are we all mad enough to do something now? We're all mad enough to do something now. 
Uh, what do we got here? Truck and vapes, very gracious of you. Love the advocating you do. Keep it up. Godfather of vaping. I, I, you know what? Very, I very much appreciate that. Uh, truck and vapes. Very much appreciate that. I, I don't know that I'm the godfather of vaping. I don't want to claim that title. That's not, I don't feel comfortable. I just don't feel comfortable doing that. I don't, that's, that just puts unnecessary pressure on me. Can I be just the grim green of vaping? Can I just be the Nick of vaping? Just, Hey, I'm the Nick of vaping. That's cool. That's I'm cool with that. Daniel two trips, 86 vaping has opened my eyes to corrupt government. What else has been denied? Much love, Grim. Yes. Yes. Vaping has done that for me. Vaping has done that for a lot of people. A lot of people. All you had to do was be a U.S. citizen last year between like September and December of 2019 to see how completely corrupt these politicians are and how completely corrupt the news, public news media is. The mainstream media, they are just as culpable to all of this because all you heard from the mainstream news media was vaping related lung injuries. We still see them today. I saw one a few weeks ago. First San Diego resident dies of the vaping related lung injury just using that blanket term of vaping, the, the mainstream media needs to be held accountable for this and the, the government needs to be held accountable for this. The health orgs need to be held accountable for this. Ultimately, I think this all traces back to like Mike Bloomberg, right? Isn't he the one trying to control the world? Yeah. Isn't he the one trying to control the world? Yes, vaping has opened a lot of our eyes to the peer corruption of the government. And that's why I tell people to vote their hopes. Vote your hopes, my friends. Uh, Georgia Boy TV, TFV reviews, uh, very gracious of you. Love you, Grim. Thank you for all you do. You have showed me some love on Instagram. Wanted to give you some love back. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. You know, on Instagram, if you, if you, I say this all the time, see, now I'm getting off track again. If I like something on Instagram, that means I was there in person and double tapped it. Thank you, Angela Garrity, for those links in the chat as well to Othra authra.org.au. Uh, Colin Mendelson, who we're going to hear from in just a moment. Colin Mendelson at Authra. Great man. Great man. Uh, Sexy King Phil, very gracious of you. Yo, yo, Grim, have you heard of the Hell Vape MD RTA? It's amazing and definitely worth it for mouth to lung lovers. I'm sure it's a fine RTA. I will never be supporting or purchasing a Hell Vape product ever, ever again. Just will not be. It's a personal thing. It's a personal thing. That's all I'm going to say. Do not support Hell Vape. I refuse to support Hell Vape. But if it's a good mouth to lung RTA, then cool. I hope mouth to lung vapors like it. I will never try it. I will never vape it, sexy King Phil. Uh, Damien, very gracious of you. Eight days notice after the same government was happy for people to import nicotine for years. Clowns. Yeah. And I just, what I can't believe about Australia is they're actually citing that Stanton Glantz gateway study. Stanton Glantz, I, on behalf of the United States of America, I apologize for Stanton Glantz and his actual garbage science somehow making its way to Australia. And it's not just made its way to Australia, it's made its way to the United Kingdom, which is why Public Health England had to recently reiterate, no, 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 that this is an exclusively USA issue. It was vitamin E acetate in illicit THC cartridges, had nothing to do with nicotine vaping, or trying to tell their citizens, look, vaping is still at least 95% less harmful. If you're a smoker, you should switch now without hesitation. Our garbage media and our garbage scientists are spreading their little gross, slimy octopus tentacles all over the all over the world. All over the world. Unbelievable, Damien. Truck and vapes. Very gracious of you. Bro, you just you, you're too kind. You're too very kind. Here's a bunch of fist bumps. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna add another one. Seven. Brett Jordan, very gracious of you. Weird thing is you'll still be able to bring it in your luggage from overseas travel, so it's contradictory. Is that a real thing? I had heard about this, Brett. I had heard about this, that if you go overseas and you buy it, you can bring it back into the country with you in your luggage. So 
Brett, I'm not condoning this, but you or someone in Australia, maybe Bogan could get away with it. You can be, go become the Pablo Escobar of vaping in your country. You can just, no, I just take monthly trips to the United Kingdom. <laughs> it's where I vacation. And I happen to come back with an extra suitcase full of like a thousand little uh, Nick shots that you can bring into the country and then sell on your Discord or your private Facebook group. Look, I'm not telling you how to run your black market business, but if you were gonna do it, that's how I would do it. YouTube is gonna totally demonetize this video. 8,000% demonetize this video and age restrict this video. You can bring it on your person. Breeze Tones is verifying. You can bring it on your person. Does that include luggage? Ah, I don't know. I don't know. Here's the thing. Have bans and prohibitions ever worked really ever? Ah, nope. Nope, nope. New Wave Dave, very... Sorry. At least it was a quiet burp, right? New Wave Dave, very gracious of you. LMAO, my head hits the pavement and it smells. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I, I, I stole that from Kent. Kent said that one time and I, it would just, every time I think about it, it makes me laugh. And so I try to use it as much as possible because here's a quick little side story, little own boy OC side story. Way back before COVID, you guys remember normal life? You remember COVID before COVID? Remember before that time when my friends could come over? Kent and Dwayne were both here and Dwayne was convinced that he could jump from my roof of my house, uh, the, the little roof of the shed out here into the pool. I said, no, you can't make that, A, and two, I won't let you do that because it's my house and my pool and my rules. Kent and me were both trying to convince him, no, do not do this, you cannot do this. And Kent said, it would just, how horrible would you feel if, oh, look, J Dwayne jumped off my roof and he didn't make it to the pool and his head hits the ground and his brains are everywhere and it smells bad. <laughs> and I could, could not stop laughing. Could not stop laughing. Could not stop laughing. So I'm glad you found that funny. Feel free to use it. I'll give you permission. Kent said anybody, anybody can use it. Um, chasing clouds and flavor reviews. Very gracious of you. I'm calling this issue AM Amer Australia. Amer Australia. Absolute BS. Absolute. Perfectly describes what's going on. The BS is absolute. Uh, Rob Vapes, very gracious of you. I really appreciate that. I'm gonna take a quick pause here on the Super Chats, and uh, I just, it's because I wanna hear this clip. I, I, I queued this all up, and I just want you guys to hear this. Um, Greg, Greg Hunt, Greg Hunt, Greg Hunt uh, was on a, a news uh, program recently, and he did a little interview, and I want to um, applaud this, this interviewer that was interviewing him. He did a real nice little political dance around the real topic, though, you know, around the real topic of what was going on. So I want to play you this. Unfortunately, we're going to have to look at his head. Oh, look at that. Voice of Greg Hunt. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to mute my microphone so that we can all listen to this, and I'm going to try to play it along so that I can hear it uh, as well. So just give me one sec here. Let me pause. ...containing refills. The government considering banning the importation of this vaping as, as it's known from July 1. Why are you making that call? Well, it's already banned uh, for sale domestically in Australia. So that's the existing position. But you can still buy it yourself though, can't you? Uh, well, you can't buy it from a uh, from a shop. You can't buy the uh, the liquid nicotine for, uh, for vaping. Um, and then what we've seen but you can is, buy it online. Uh, we've seen a a doubling uh, of the number of poisonings um, in Australia, um, primarily caused by imported products of, uh, of dubious safety and quality. Uh, very sadly, a Victorian toddler died from nicotine poisoning, consuming the uh, the products which were obviously somewhere within the, the, the family house. But these products, they are legal in many countries. The UK, France, they're seen as an effective tool for curbing smoking addiction. Uh, well, in fact, what we're seeing, um, and this is the other point, uh, is that uh, in the US, a 78% increase in the number of high school children who are vaping over the most recent 12-month uh, period that was surveyed. 
Uh, the poisoning cases here, uh, they've already been already been banned domestically and there was uh, an attempt by some um, to, uh, to bypass those laws through importation and what we're doing then is putting in place safety protections. People can still bring them in if they have a prescription from their doctor. It's almost like a lesser of two evils, though, because, I mean, we've had countless listeners calling in to the station, to, to Ben Fordham on 2GB Breakfast, sharing their stories, saying that vaping and e-cigarettes have been really crucial for them to, to give up smoking, and now when this change comes into effect, they're just going to go back to smoking tobacco again. Well, I think what we've found, firstly, as I say, uh, something which cannot be ignored, uh, a very significant increase uh, in... Uh, uh, in cases of liquid, uh, liquid nicotine poisoning. Secondly, um, around the world, you've actually seen, rather than it being a, uh, uh, it's a pathway off, it's a ramp on uh, to the use of nicotine and smoking with, uh, as I say, that 78% increase in high school children who are vaping. So is vaping uh, less safe than vaping. smoking cigarettes? Uh, vaping is not a safe product and what it is is uh, a pathway into smoking a pathway into nicotine use uh, in uh, many many cases and so in the united states public health officials uh, have talked about an epidemic of vaping uh, the fda their equivalent of our therapeutic goods administration um, has been deeply concerned about what they've described as uh, an epidemic an epidemic this is under the current uh, administration of President Trump. Uh, they have uh, been very critical. Uh, they have seen what they believe is a measure which has not become a smoking cessation tool, but it's become a smoking commencement tool. All right. Well, we'll leave it there, Minister. We thank you so much for your time. A busy day for you. Thank you again. That's all right. Thanks very much. Cheers, Deb. All right. Well, let me know. Ah, 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 ah. That's probably the. The twelfth time I've listened to that, and it, I just want to leave him up there. Refills. Whoops, not that. This, what a dick bag. That's like the twelfth time I've listened to that, and it it only makes me more mad every time I see it because he dodges every single question. How can you, Greg Hunt? How can you possibly say that this is an on ramp to nicotine and cigarette smoking when? worldwide there are the lowest smoking rates basically of all time basically of all time certainly in australia certainly in the united states these products aren't new they, i've been vaping for 11 years these have been on the on the market since 2007 how do you look at the smoking rates and determine that vaping is causing more smoking the mental gymnastics that you have to jump through to come to that conclusion are astonishing. Astonishing. It's a personal vendetta of his. I, we're going to hear from Colin Mendelson uh, in just a second as well. I have an audio clip of Colin Mendelson from one of his YouTube videos that I'll be linking to down in the description. But uh, I just wanted to read you guys this as well. Um, this, is, uh, this was posted by Brian Marlowe on Twitter, and I'm not super familiar with Brian Marlowe, but he is the uh, executive, uh, executive director of taxpayers, of Australian taxpayers, uh, Australia's largest free market activist organization. So I'm gonna post a link in the description to, to his Twitter as well, and I wanted to read you guys a series of tweets that he posted. It's 11 tweets, so we're gonna have to hang in there. Little bit of story time here, but he posted, look, here's a timeline of Greg Hunt's cruel crusade against vaping. So this starts in, uh, oh, they do the numbers backwards. T 26 month, what is that? <laughs> this starts uh, June 26, 2017. House of Representatives Health Committee inquiry into e-cigarettes commences. This is where it all starts. In October, Hunt tells the Health Committee that vaping is not going to be happening under my watch. Undermining, completely undermining the inquiry. Vaping is not going to be happening under my watch. Does that sound like someone who really cares about public health in any capacity? Or does it sound like, I have a personal vendetta against vaping. I work for the Ministry of Truth. 
not going to be happening under my watch. That's the language of the oppressor right there. We're going to fast forward to uh, March 2018, House of Representatives Health Committee inquiry into e-cigarettes completed and tabled in the House. A majority on the committee recommends the ban on vaping continues. The chair is in the minority and and presents a dissenting report in support of vaping. September 2018, Hunt agrees to enter, to refer vaping to the ANU for further independent scientific review following a robust party room discussion in support of legal vaping. There's an article from The Guardian. Now, I'm not going to pretend that I know this is where I'm going to have to rely on people like Breeze Tones. I'm not going to pretend how to know how the inner workings of the Australian government work. Bogan was trying to explain it to me while I was in New Zealand and it was just, you know, I don't understand any of that. I have a pretty firm grasp on how the United States government functions and works and things like that and and congressmen and representatives and, you know, checks and balances and, you know, elected. I know how a lot of this works. Australia, it, it might be another language to me. I don't know what the ANU is. Despite referring the issue to the ANU, costing taxpayers hundreds of thousands of dollars, Hunt recommits to the vaping ban at the 2019 election health debate at the National Press Club. Hunt states that vaping is, listen to this quote, not something that on my watch I'm willing to count to countuance. What the crap does this word even mean? I don't know. That's why I have to Google it. I'm going to accept. Okay. (laughs) It's not something I'm going to accept. Uh, It is far more a case of being a ramp on rather than a pathway off of smoking. So in spite of all of the evidence, in spite of low smoking rates, he's doubling down on the on-ramp theory. You know who else I've heard this on-ramp theory from? FDA. Yeah, FDA commissioners have said this on-ramp. I've heard Scott Gottlieb use the term, you know, it might be an off-ramp for smokers, but it can't be an on-ramp for 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 youths. It's not an on-ramp for youths, clearly, because we have the lowest youth smoking rates in the history of time. Still doubling down on the bad on-ramp, off-ramp analogy. So no, that's not what I'm promising. On my time, on my watch, as long as I'm in this role. To me, that sounds like a threat. That's uh, To me, that sounds like Greg Hunt is saying, look, you either accept this or you vote me out. I don't know how voting works in Australia. I think you vote for a party and then the party has to uh, appoint or remove politicians. Is, is that the way it works? ANU was supposed to deliver the report in December, 2020. He did this before that was, uh, delivered. Australia wasted $750,000 taxpayer money. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Well, so it's good to know that Australia is at least wasting taxpayer money like the United States is, you know, <laughs> at least, the, at least that's consistent across the board. Here we are in, uh, what is that, August 2019, in response to a question by Senator Cash and someone else representing Minister Hunt in the Senate, uh, advises that the ANU review will not be completed until December 2020 and will cost taxpayers $750,000 and has no specific terms of reference. Here we are in September 2019, Hunt misleads the public about vaping-related deaths in the United States and, again, about the on-ramp argument to maintain his myopic opposition to vaping. Yeah, really doubling down on that on-ramp. What we found is uh, that despite the lowest recorded smoking rates of all time, and despite these products being on the market for well over a decade without, without incident, it's still an on-ramp for non-nicotine users to become smokers. That's crazy. That is crazy. February 2020. Sterling G's motion passes. The Senate calling on the government to ban nicotine imports. The Australian Labor and the Greens support the motion. Sterling Griff's office tells angry vapors calling his office that he never drafted the motion. He simply presented it. 
In the midst of the COVID-19 response, Hunt briefs a story to Dana Adele at SMH, and he has ordered that he has ordered the TSA TGA Gov. Look, I don't know who some of these governing bodies are. TGA Gov. I'm trying to pretend I know how Australian works. That account is suspended, apparently. Okay, to work with the Australian Border Force to. Crack down on nicotine imports. Such a crackdown both preempts the ANU study and undermines the coalition party room. Lastly, this time for pro vaping MPs in the federal government, the time for pro vaping MPs in the federal government to stand up to Hunt's bullying is now. He has undermined your party room decisions. He has wasted taxpayer money and he has consigned 300,000 vapors back to smoking. Act now. There's things we can act on. Like I said, I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to put uh, this whole thread, this whole thread <laughs> that I just read to you in the description. Links included, the Guardian link, the uh, the other link, the ABC interview, which I think that's what we kind of just heard was that ABC interview just a little bit. I think that's what we just heard. So I'm going to post a link to that in the description. Uh, I'm going to post Brian Marlowe's uh, Twitter in the description as well. Uh, no, we're going to skip that for now. We're going to skip that for now. We're going to skip that for now, although I'll be putting links for the Australian Tobacco Harm Reduction in the description of this video as well. Uh, where was I going to end up over here? Uh, I'm going to put a link for whoops, this man in the description as well, Greg Hunt. There he is, 65,000 followers on Twitter, authorized by Greg Hunt MP, liberal member, uh, Summersville, Victoria, greghunt.com.au. This would be a really good guy to tweet at if you're angry about this. I would say I would say this would be a really good guy to tweet at if you're angry about this. So, what I want to hear from I want to hear from I want to hear from Colin Mendelson real quickly. But before we hear from Colin Mendelson, let's do a couple more of these uh let's do a couple more of these super chats. Uh, sorry, uh, oh, Ford, Ford Power 5288, you, you be sorry for nothing, my friend. Sorry I can't give more. You've been a staple for me for years. Didn't Helvake make the Grim Kit? Can we get a little more info on what happened? Um, I've talked about this before. We beat, we're, we're good with Helvape. <laughs> we're good with Helvape. Just fuck Helvape. Um, yeah, they just, I don't know, they didn't pay us for the, for the Grim Kits. Me, me or Dwayne. They just said, uh, we're not going to pay you. And so we said, was there anything we can do? And they said, no, we're just not going to pay you. We're going to continue to sell Grim Kits. Uh, we're going to release an RBA base for it with your name on it, by the way. My name is on that RBA base and I had nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. Um, still haven't been paid by Hell Vape. We made, we made a concession with Hellvape that we could buy some Grim Kits at cost and sell them on recoilrda.com, try to recoup our costs that way, try to make some money off of our hard work that way. We sold them on recoilrda.com. Wasn't that many, wasn't that many. They continue to be sold with my name all over it uh, and I made no money from it. So that's why I say fuck Hellvape. I think it's comical that Hellvape is releasing the Dead Rabbit RTA V2 with Heathen, who hasn't been active in the community for years. No one buy that RTA. I'm just calling it right now. Please nobody buy the Dead Rabbit V2 RTA. Vape and Heathen doesn't need another half a million dollars for sitting on his ass, not helping advocacy, not doing reviews, not cultivating the industry, not cultivating the community, doing nothing. You can't. Can't sue them. It's China. You can't sue China. That's just the way the cookie crumbled. And all I can do from it is learn from it, move on, and say, I will never support or work with Hell Vape ever again. That's how I deal with it. Don't worry. I did plenty of raging. Plenty of raging. Um, Rob Vape's very gracious of you. 
Uh, won't even use my signed Grim Green Pod that you signed for me when I was working Hell Vape with you and Dwayne at the uh, expo in Ontario. I heard what happened uh, and it became personal and I no longer support Hell Vape. I, you know what, Rob? I appreciate that. I'm not. I'm certainly not calling for a boycott on Hell Vape because, sure, they might release some products that might help some smokers. That's the only reason why I can't say that. They might release some products and that's the way I feel about the Grim Kit is it's a good little kit, man. It can help a vapor have a good vape experience, might help a smoker get off of cigarettes. So who am I to say? Who am I to say? Vaping with super clouds, very gracious of you. Sorry, I can't give more. Again, you don't have to ever be sorry. You're given, I appreciate it. Sorry, I can't give more uh, off pay week. Thanks. All good, vaping with super clouds. I appreciate you. Appreciate you being here. Omboy OC is here. Holy shit, didn't even notice. Uh, Appreciate you being here, bro. Uh, he says, I'd totally clear the pool gap. Look, <laughs> you, you wouldn't not with your back, with your back and the condition that it's in, I'm not letting you a even get on my roof and B try to jump from my roof to the swimming pool. Not a chance. Uh, Jules, very gracious of you. Oh, look at that. You gave me a little, uh, dancing Kiwi looking in the mirror saying, thanks for being you. I appreciate that. Uh, sexy King Phil, Greg Hunt, get your facts straight. Good Lord. That talk made me mad. I just don't understand why some legislators hate vaping. It's all about the money. As you said, I think you do understand why some legislators hate vaping money. Money makes the world go round money. Here's the thing. Here's the conclusion. Here's one of the conclusions that I'm coming to in my head. We know for sure that people are just greedy. Not everybody, but greedy people are greedy. Greedy people don't just want money. If you think that greedy people can only be greedy for money, powerful people can be greedy for power, the power that they hold over people. And if you think that these politicians aren't power greedy, then, then, then I don't know what to tell you. They definitely are. I don't see, I don't see anything from, from Greg Hunt him giving a shit about public health in any capacity. He just wants two things, money and power. And those are the most dangerous kind of people. Kind of like Mike Bloomberg, you know. Mike Bloomberg is uh, greedy for money and greedy for power. He wants to control what you see, what you eat, how much you pay for gas. He wanted to charge charge people for going into Manhattan during certain times of the day when he was governor. Are you crazy, Mike Bloomberg? My Bloomberg's out of his mind. Appreciate that, Sexy King Phil. The Vape Saloon. Uh, If vaping is causing more smoking, ban smoking, right? It would then be impossible for there be the gateway, but money. (laughs) Long, uh, vape long and prosper. Love you, Grim. Here you go, Vape Saloon. I'm gonna give you the Spock because you said vape long and prosper. Live long and prosper, my friend. Yes, I mean, the Vape Saloon makes an excellent point. If vaping is causing more smoking, then why don't we ban smoking? Because then it would be impossible for there to be a gateway. It would be impossible. And then you just have people addicted to, you know, relatively harmless vaping. Relatively, relatively harmless vaping. Real Jim Shady. Sorry I'm late. Couldn't find my Rage sweatband. (laughs) Yeah, this is my Rage sweatband. My LA Dodgers hat. That's my Rage sweatband. I'm trying to hide. I have a hair that just exists back here and I look, it just looks like a, I look like a weird. And so I try to hide it back here. I'm trying to hide it out of view. It's okay. Glad you got your rage sweatband. Uh, Chasing clouds and flavor reviews. Own boy's brain smells bad. I'm dying. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, his brains are everywhere. It smells bad. (laughs) It's one of the funniest things I've ever heard in my life. Not to mention probably the single funniest thing that Kent that Kent has ever said. So uh, what I'm gonna do right now, we're gonna hear really quickly, two minutes and 22 seconds from Colin Mendelson. He has this great video on YouTube, which I'll be linking to in the description. Here, I'll just, I'm just gonna put it in the chat right now. Uh, Chris Rowland, you got a great question from the chat. Uh, what happens to nicotine patches? The answer to that, are you ready for it? Nothing. Nothing happens to nicotine patches. Nothing happens to pharmaceutical NRTs nothing. So you could import a fuck ton of nicotine gum and just chew nicotine gum. Just chew it. Just become an active, just chew nicotine gum for the year. 
that it takes for them to, for the ethics committee to, well, I don't know, reevaluate what's going on with vaping and e-cigs. And you know what? The vaping climate in another year is probably going to be a lot different than it is now. Might be more restrictive in some places, might be completely less restrictive in some places, as we're going to talk about in just a second. But also, I mentioned this in the vlog, Hong Kong just had their vaping ban taken down. Yeah, no more, no more vape ban in Hong Kong. Vape, you can vape freely in, in Hong Kong. Yeah, as John Haymaker said in the chat, cigarette patches, gums, and sprays are exempt. So no punishment for cigarettes. So import all the cigarettes you want. S smoke up. Asylum Vapes, you inspired me to do my own review channel. Thank you. Thank you. We need more reviewers. I was just saying this on one of my patron streams. We need, we need more reviewers. We need more people. Look, there are people that have just abandoned the vape industry. You know, people like uh, Rip Trippers, like Zofi Vapes has one foot out the door. A lot of these vape reviewers are just leaving. Like Richard Mallard, whatever happened to vaping with Twisted 420, he just plays video games now. And like, that's fine. They can do whatever they want. But what that does is that opens up opportunities for new vape YouTubers to step in. Asylum Vapes, you could be the next Rip Trippers. You could be. You just don't know it yet. You could be. So I say welcome one and all. Everybody could jump on everybody should jump on YouTube and start reviewing stuff. I would love to see that. I would love to see that because that means we're going to be converting more smokers. That means we're going to be we're going to be growing this community. That means we're going to be growing and cultivating this industry. I would love that. I would love that. So like I said, let's hear real quickly from Colin Mendelson. If you guys want to sit here and just relax, I'm going to take a little bit of a vape break while we listen to Colin Mendelson. And this is, this is, this is great. This is the polar opposite of what Greg Hunt just said. This is the polar opposite of what Greg Hunt just said on, uh, in fact, I got even got a little Whoa, that was weird. No, shut up. Oh, sorry, Colin. I didn't mean to tell you to shut up. I, look at this. Colin Mendelson. Nope, we're not in the wrong spot. Colin Mendelson, the voice of Colin Mendelson. The only advice that I have for Colin Mendelson, and I just want to say, Colin Mendelson, love you. I love what you're doing in Australia. All the, all the vapors in Australia appreciate you. I appreciate you, Colin Mendelson. Here's my only advice for Colin Mendelson. Just smile. Just smile a little, a little bit. I love the information you're giving out, but you just look so grumpy while you're doing it. Just smile a little bit. You're mad. I'm mad. We're all mad. Just smile, Colin Mendelson. So let's hear. Uh, I'm gonna kick, I'm gonna cut my mic off real quick so that we can all sit here. Let's take a little bit of a vape break. Uh, let's listen to what uh, Colin Mendelson has to say about why is vaping nicotine being banned in Australia. Cool. The evidence is now clear that vaping nicotine is an effective quitting aid for smokers. Probably the most effective quitting aid we have. I'm Associate Professor Colin Mendelson, uh, a tobacco treatment specialist and founding chairman of the Australian Tobacco Harm Reduction Association. Vaping is also the most popular quitting method in countries where it's available. And experts agree that it is far safer than smoking. And that's because vaping has far fewer toxic chemicals than cigarette smoke. Vaping is also much cheaper than smoking. So why is vaping banned in Australia? Why is Australia the only Western democracy which bans the sale and use of nicotine for vaping? Why is it possible to go to any corner shop and buy lethal cigarettes that kill two out of three users but not be able to buy a far safer alternative that will help people to quit. Why are we denying smokers their universal and fundamental human right to the best possible health by preventing them from switching to a much safer alternative? Good public health policy should be based on the best available evidence. In the case of vaping, the risks of vaping are theoretical and small, and the benefits are substantial and huge. And on balance, we can see that it's overall a, a huge opportunity for public health. But the opposition to vaping in Australia is not based on the evidence. It's mostly driven by ideological objections, political considerations, vested interests, moral and emotional objections, financial considerations, 
everything but the best evidence for public health. Most smokers want to quit and try repeatedly to do so. And it's unethical and unscientific, I think, to withhold vaping from smokers, for whom many uh, it would actually be life-saving. Vaping is the single biggest opportunity we have to finally eliminate the scourge of smoking after decades and millions of deaths. We can't miss this opportunity in Australia because millions of lives depend on it. Theoretical. The harms from vaping are th mostly theoretical. I love you, Colin Mendelson. I love you. Cheer up, buddy. Smile every once in a while. I appreciate you. So here's what we're going to do real quick. Uh, I don't know why I always say real quick. Doesn't matter. It, it's, it's not going to be real quick. It's going to be long. I know that music is too loud. Here's the thing. I couldn't do anything about the music. That's just the music that's on his YouTube video. And I tried my best, but it's just there. And it's just there. Uh, it, it's easier to watch than it is to listen to. I just didn't want to download his YouTube video and then play his YouTube video on my YouTube. I don't know how he would feel about that. I don't want to, you know, I don't want, it's like, oh, you got a, you got a trade, you know, you got a, uh, a community guideline strike from Colin Mendelson for re, you know, for reposting his, uh, reposting his video. So I didn't want to do that, but I will post in the description, Colin Mendelson's YouTube, as well as, uh, this particular video. So there was a, uh, what, what do we, what can we do in Australia? That's what we're coming down to. What are we going to do in Australia? What are we going to do? Well, the first thing that we can do is uh, this came from uh, Legalize Vaping. This is uh, directly from their Twitter. In fact, I have another quick little video I'd love to show you from, uh, from Twitter, uh, from Legalize Vaping. Uh, and they have a petition. Now, I've never been a huge fan of petitions because in the United States, they just do not work. They just don't work. They're useless. We had, I, if I could tell you how many petitions I've signed and the results of those petitions, it would be a million and no results, <laughs> no results. I've signed so many White House petitions over the years to have the FDA reevaluate their stance on electronic cigarettes, stop this ban, stop the flavor ban, stop this, that, and the other. Hello from uh, California, Logan. Appreciate you being here. So there's a petition right here. And it reads, to the honorable president and members of the Senate in Parliament assembled, the petition of the undersigned shows the legislative changes are required to regulate for and provide consumer protections to Australians who wish to use nicotine or nicotine-free e-cigarettes. Your petitioners ask the Senate to call on the Minister of Health to allow Australian smokers access to e-cigarettes by amending the poison schedule to permit the sale of e-cigarettes containing nicotine, ensure that regulations protect users of e-cigarettes with or without nicotine. They got 31,000 signatures. I'm not sure what they're going for, but if you're an Australian vapor, this is something. This is one thing that you can do. One of the reasons that I really dislike... Uh, one of the reasons that I really dislike petitions in general is just because when you sign a petition, that's not where it ends. You did, you did one thing. We got a whole toolbox. We got a whole arsenal of things that we're going to be doing that we're able to do. In fact, Colin Mendelson, once again, here we go. Australian Tobacco Harm Reduction Association. Vapors are rightfully angry, anxious, and shocked. What can you do? Angry? You have every right to be. I'm going to zoom in on this so we can have a little bit of story time with Grim Green here. Here's what we're going to do. Vapors should be outraged, anxious, and shocked at the sudden announcement of banning nicotine for vaping. For many, vaping was the only quitting aid that worked for mountains of people. Mountains of people. How many people have you talked to, have I talked to? Dwayne, how many people have you talked to that said, I tried everything? Tried the gum, tried the patch, tried Chantix, uh, tried hypnosis. None of it worked. And then when I got a vape, I accidentally quit smoking. Vaping is so successful and works so well. It's the only product I've ever seen where people accidentally quit smoking. Smokers will buy a vape thinking, meh, this, meh, what's this? What's this? What is this? Rise bar? What's this going to do? I don't, I'll give it a try. Hmm. Hmm. It tastes pretty nice. Pretty satisfying. Yeah. I like this. And then just quit smoking. By accident, with no intention of doing it. 
For many, vaping was the only quit smoking aid that worked. They feel great, are saving money, and are enjoying it. For many, it's a lifesaver. And now this. Just look at some of the distressing comments on our last post here, which you can certainly go look at. I'm going to be linking this down in the description. Suddenly, with two weeks notice, importing nicotine into Australia is effectively banned and carries a $220,000 fine. However, deadly cigarettes are available at every corner store. Crazy. Why is the government ignoring the scientific evidence? Vaping is the most popular and most effective quitting aid available and could save hundreds of thousands of Australian lives. Many people think it's because, have you tried acupuncture? Have not tried acupuncture, John Haymaker. Sorry, that just caught my eye. Uh, Asylum Vape says, could you give me tips for a better channel? (laughs) Has me pissed off beyond belief. Uh, Asylum Vapes, I'll tell you what I tell everybody who's jumping on YouTube. Just do it. Just jump in. Just dive in. Just start reviewing stuff. Be yourself. Have fun with it. Be honest. Speak the truth. If you have good content, people will watch. If you have good content, people will watch. Why is the government ignoring scientific evidence? Vaping is the most popular and most effective quitting aid available and can save hundreds of thousands of Australian lives. Many people think it's because the government is putting the tobacco tax before public health. (gasps) What? Why would anybody think that? That's crazy. The government would never put money before public health. What are you kidding me? Sadly, many are losing and have lost confidence in our leaders and democracy. Most vapors have told me that they will go back to smoking if nicotine is banned. It's just too hard without it. For some, this will be a death sentence. Smoking kills two in three long-term users. Others will turn to a flourishing black market, which will create further problems. Big Tobacco is celebrating. Criminal gangs are gearing up for a new industry. Vape shops will soon be closing. Now is the time to act. Let's channel this anger into something productive. Here are some suggestions. Fucking Colin Mendelson. Sorry, I'm trying not to use too many obscenities here on Tuesday, bro, Tuesday. It's just difficult. I get too ragey. Donate to the fighting fund. Uh, We have to fight this decision. It is unscientific, breaches human rights, and will cost lives. LVA, ARVIA, and PPHA have set up a fund for legal challenges and public relations campaign. Othra strongly supports this fundraiser, but it is not able to be involved because of our funding policy. Please make a donation here today. Money. We are going to need money to fight big money. Because like we've pointed out, and like we've all come to this conclusion, it's always all about money. Always all about money. Uh, Jem in chat says, I smoked for 50 years before vaping. 50 years. Five, zero years before vaping four years ago. It's going to kill me to go back to COPD. I, I, my heart breaks for you, Jem. My heart breaks for you. Because as science has demonstrated, Vaping can reverse the effects of COPD. If you've been vaping for four years, it's probably done immeasurable amounts of good things for you, completely, drastically changed your health for the better. And now, Greg Hunt, Greg Hunt, Greg Hunt wants Jem to go back to cigarettes by fining her $220,000. Money going to take money. And if we all, and it doesn't take much, like if everybody donates five bucks, 10 bucks, I can, we can all easily donate 10 bucks. That adds up. That adds up. Contact your local MP. Uh, Please write a short letter to your federal and state MPs and tell them what this means to you. Have you tried everything else to quit? Was vaping the only thing that worked? How has your health improved? What will you do if you can't get nicotine? Keep it short, less than a page. Be polite. Tell it from the heart. Find your local MP contact details here on the Legalize Vaping's website. I'm going to do you one better because our, our resident Australian builder, Breeze Tones, has put together this spectacular, spectacular Google document that is every MP the party they're associated with, the Twitters if they have it, the emails if they have it, the phone numbers, their P.O. boxes, their Facebook pages. Breeze Tones, you're a gentleman and a scholar, and I can't believe that you put this together. Not be, I didn't mean that in the way that it sounded. I can't believe that Breeze Tones put this together. I can't believe that Breeze Tones put this together. 
This is above and beyond what even we have done in the United States. We don't have all of our Congress people in a document like this with all of their you know, affiliations and Twitters and emails and telephone numbers and PO boxes and Facebook pages. So as Colin Mendelson says here, keep it short, less than a page, be polite, tell it from the heart, find your local MPs, contact details on the Legalize Vaping's website. I'm gonna have links in this to the description. I'm gonna have a link to the Breeze Tones uh, Google Doc in the description as well. How to tell your story on the phone or in person. This is the same advice that CASA is always giving out. Be polite. Ask to speak to your member of parliament. You can speak to your MP, great. If not, talk to their staff. Make it personal by asking them if they know any smokers and tell your own quitting story. Ask them if they wish the smoker they knew had the same opportunities. He's hitting every nail on the head. This is something I've been saying for years, but every smoker deserves the right deserves the right to be able to quit smoking the way that we quit smoking. Yeah, seriously, support Breeze Tones. Go buy some coils from Breeze Tones. Donate some money. You know, there's a lot we can do. There is a lot we can do. The one thing that we have on our side besides, you know, mountains of science, besides all that pesky science and data and evidence that shows that not only is vaping at least 95% less harmful for you, but that it's almost twice as effective as any NRT currently available on the market. Besides all that stuff, we have numbers. We have numbers, you guys. Numbers. There are millions of us. Millions. We can be the change that we want to see. We can do that. And I'm not trying to just blow vapor up your ass right now, but we can be that revolution. Uh, so some more key things, you know, let them know that many doctors support vaping because of it's less 95% less harmful. Let them know that Greg Hunt promised that there wouldn't be any more changes, but lied because what is a, a politician lied? How can that be? Let them know that you are normally a swinging voter, but that you were one of the many quiet Australians who voted for them the first time and the last election, even if you didn't, that's okay. Tell them that this is the only issue that you, your family, and your friends are talking about right now. Ring, I think that means call in Australian. Do you guys say ring over there? Uh, some more advice from Breeze Tones in the chat. Also in emailing, make sure you mention that this pertains to every single Australian. Otherwise, the MPs will try to push you to your local MP. Only we need their, only we need their full support. We need all their support. Ring, I'm assuming that means call. Ring or write to Greg Hunt. Look, you got his telephone number. You got his email. You got his website right here. This is an important one too that I would love to see some US vapors do. Make a video. Some tips, tell your personal story from the heart. Use natural light whenever possible. Have the lighting come in front of you, not behind you. Film horizontally, not vertically. Keep it brief, no more than 30 to 60 seconds. Less is always more. Less is always more unless you're on a grim green stream and then we're always running long. You know, sometimes more is more. Uh, post your video on social media with the hashtag vaping saved me. Tag your local MP and Greg Hunt Twitter, quick at Greg Hunt MP at Scott Morrison MP, Facebook, Greg Hunt MP. And he even gives a little example. Hi, my name is Susan and I smoked cigarettes for 35 years. I tried everything to quit, but nothing worked. And then I developed asthma. And then one day I tried vaping and had my last cigarette. Yes, we tried to do this in the United States, 15 seconds for advocacy where uh, people posted 15 seconds of their quitting stories, but there's no reason in today's day and age, day and age, if you have a smartphone in front of you, you too can record a, a, a real quick little video, put it up on Twitter, put it up on Instagram, tell your smoking story, tag the people that need to be tagged. Numbers, you guys, we have numbers. Post it on social media, uh, follow Athra, sign the petition. I'm gonna post the petition in the description. Uh, call Talkback Radio, commercial radio is powerful. Click here for details to contact Australian radio stations. Write your local newspaper and look, this is good advice for Australians. This is good advice for vapors everywhere, everywhere. Call radio stations. I've tried to hit up Joe Rogan at least a thousand times. I've tried to hit up podcasts multiple, multiple times. Uh, hit up uh, In Focus California. They had me on their show. 
I got to be on TV in Focus, California, talking to that doctor who was trying to blame Ivali on nicotine vaping. And I told her she was wrong. And then I was right. Because <laughs> she was wrong. So uh, in addition to that, I'm going to have this petition down in the description. We're going to have uh, a few other advocate Twitters that I'm going to post down in the description um, that are just great people to follow. Unbelievable people to follow. The first one's going to be Dr. Maurira, Ma, Mariwa. I can never say her name right. Dr. Mawira Glover. I got to meet her and talk to her in New Zealand. Brilliant woman. Brilliant. She's just She's just so incredibly smart and brilliant. She's a perfect person to follow on Twitter. Another person I would suggest following on Twitter is Dr. Attila Danko. Besides having just a great, just a great name. Really, really smart. Former president of the New Nicotine Alliance in Australia. Oh, look at that. He retweeted my tweet. Oh, thank you, Dr. Attila Danko. Dr. Attila Danko. Great guy to follow on Twitter as well for some uh, Australian vape advocacy. Um, I saw a video recently on Facebook where this gentleman, Aaron Stonehouse, I don't know, he's the leader of something, try not to be taxed to death. You can follow his office, Aaron Stonehouse. I don't know much about this Australian politician, but he is very much anti this uh, nicotine prohibition very anti this nicotine prohibition. So he'd be a guy to follow. Another guy in the same video that I saw was this doctor, Dr. Joe. Dr. Jones, DIY health, an independent doctor actually talking about health. He's got some good tweets in here. He stands behind uh, vaping tobacco harm reduction. He uh, He's retweeting Dr. Uh, Mr. Colin Mendelson here, which Definitely follow Dr. Uh, no, I don't want unfollow Dr. Unfollow Colin Mendelson. Take that, Colin. That'll teach you not to smile. I'm just kidding. I would never do that. Of course, I have to follow Colin Mendelson. And uh, yeah, so I guess that's it for Australia. Oh, here is the, uh, yeah, this is the gateway study. I'm going to post a link to this in the description. This was, post, <laughs> this was posted on Vice by, uh, by our friend uh, Alex Norcia. He's no longer at Vice, but... He, he did one of these before, shortly before he left Vice, and uh, this is the on-ramp study. Scientists say another panic-fueling vape study needs to be retracted. This is the Stanton Glantz on-ramp study. This is, basically, this is basically Greg Hunt's entire argument, and it needs to be retracted. It needs to be retracted. Even if all those in the government are not from the party you support, we need everyone to be uh, to, here to achieve this. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, bro, there's power in numbers. Power in numbers. Please do not give hope up hope in Australia. Please do not give up hope in, uh, in Indonesia. Please do not give up hope in New Zealand. Please, please do not give up hope in the United States. Because like I said, apart from the mountains and mountains of science and data and studies that we have, we got numbers. We got numbers on our side. We can actually do this. We can be the change that we want to see. And I know that's really, really corny, but we can do it. And here, I'm going to leave you off today, uh, you guys, with some, uh, with some good news. Good news for a change. How about that? Let's double tap some IGs. Speaking of good news, psh, look at freaking twisted messes. Look at Kent coming out of the gate with some dope coils right there. You guys want to watch Ownboy OC's story? Can I rebroadcast this? Oh, look, it's mango juice. Oh, shocking. That's always in Dwayne's story. Oh, look, it's another shot of his mango juice. Oh, shocking. That's always in Dwayne's story. Okay, I'm just kidding. Um, here's what I have saved on Instagram. Uh, this is an account that I follow, and Instagram isn't necessarily the best place to share information, advocacy, links, things like that. Um, and there's this one uh, account that I constantly constantly get tagged in, um, Vapor Advocate. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and follow you, Vapor Advocate. I apologize for not following you for so long. Um, but here's some good news. Let's re read this headline for me real quick, you guys. Read this headline. What's that say? Oh, it's too bright? Is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> I thought that that was too bright. It says, Tennessee Department of Health recommends e-cigs as a cessation aid to quit smoking. Tennessee Department of Health. 
According to the FDA deeming regulations, vape shops and e-cig vendors can only discuss e-cigs potential benefits regarding tobacco harm reduction. Marketers cannot advertise their products as smoking cessation tools, at least not currently. However, the Tennessee Department of Health, the DOH, seems to strongly disagree with the FDA's approach by explicitly recommending in a recent study that vaping can help tens of thousands of Tennesseans quit smoking. Tennessee Department of Health. And you know why this is coming out of the Tennessee Department of Health? Because our guy, Demetrius Agrifiotis, and his nonstop advocacy, nonstop advocacy with the uh, Tennessee Smoke Free Association, I, I don't know for sure that this is his doing, but it has to be his doing. DOH officials concluded that a cross-sectional study involving 6,000 observational evaluations of smoking adults over the age of 18, the focus of that research was to determine any possible links between vaping and smoking cessation, most specifically regarding dual usage. This three-and-a-half-year study is considered to be the very first of its kinds kind due to its extensive time frame and breadth of quantitative extended quantitative research. An abstract of the study entitled E-Cigarette Usage and Its Associations with Attempted Cessation Among Adult Smokers, Tennessee Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System 2016 is readily available on the American Public Health Association website. They give a little overview of the study done in Tennessee, but this is the first state, the very first state, their Department of Public Health. We have a California Department of Health. You know what they say? They tell you that nicotine's brain poison, brain poison. But in Tennessee, they say no. They say this will help smokers. Of the original 6,127 observations, 1,178 participants were identified as current smokers. 261 of these current smokers admitted to also being dual users of tobacco, cigarettes, and vaping products. 681 of the 1,178 admitted to having to attempt to quit smoking at least once during the past 12-month evaluation period. There's a few more pages to this, but uh, I'll, just, uh, I'll just repost this on my Instagram so you can check it out there. I'm going to try to track down a link so that I can put it in the description of this video. Rod... That's not the attitude to have. It's not hopeless. Vaping is not over. Rod, what the hell is wrong with you? What is your fucking problem? You non-contributing zero. I said this before and I'll say this again. Vaping is going to change the world. It already is changing the world. It's going to save billions and billions of lives. Billions and billions of lives. And if you're cool with uh, just whatever, goodbye, we're fucked, abandon vaping, that's cool. But just get the fuck out of the way so the rest of us can do something about it. Cool? Is that the deal we're going to come to? Is that the deal we're going to come to, Rod? You know, Rod, I, Rod, I can just do this. Bye. Rod, I can just ban you from my channel like right now. You're in timeout. Sorry, Rod. <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> we can do that, Rod. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this here uh, Tuesday, bro, Tuesday. I will have... Sorry, that's annoying when people talk through vapor. Can't stop, won't stop, Rising Vapor, Rising Phoenix Vapory. I see you on Twitter. I see you on Instagram, Rising Phoenix Vapory. Thank you for everything you do. You know, there's a lot of people that I owe a lot of thanks to that I don't, I don't, I don't. I just, I always forget, but I see you. Don't think I don't see you. I see you guys doing it. I love it. I love it when I see advocacy. I love it when I see you guys on Twitter going nuts. I love it when I see you guys on Instagram going nuts. And, uh, Uh, maintain the echo chamber. No, I'm not maintaining the echo chamber. Is it an echo chamber to want to save lives? Is that the echo chamber we're in? Because if that's the echo chamber we're in, then fine, I'll die on this hill. I'm not going down without a fight and I'm not putting a billion lives on the line. I'm just not going to do that. Everybody, 
Everybody deserves to get to quit smoking the way that we got to quit smoking. This isn't about me. This isn't about you. This isn't about, oh, well, now we can't get Omboyosi mango in Australia. Yeah, that sucks. But this is for the smokers. This is for the smokers. That's why we do this. Unreal. That echo chamber comment is not applicable. Not applicable in any capacity. Yeah, we're gonna end up. Uh, we're gonna end this. Uh, we're gonna end this here Tuesday, bro. Tuesday. We're just gonna do the rest of these. Uh, we're gonna do the rest of these super chats. We're gonna do the rest of these super chats. I really appreciate you guys coming to hang out with me. Really appreciate it. I, I'm just trying to be as positive as I possibly can because look, all this negative news it takes its toll on me. I spent the last four days just raging, just raging. You know, raging. And now that I've talked about it and now that I've got it off my chest and now that I feel like maybe we motivated some people today to do something, maybe we're actually going to, maybe we're actually going to do this. It feels a lot better. It feels a lot better to be positive than to just say we're fucked. Eh, We're fucked. Ah, See what we're dealing with down here. I call it nicotine derangement syndrome, Damien. Nicotine derangement syndrome. Yeah, we're just going to run a little bit long. That's okay. Vaping case. Very gracious of you. Come on, Nick. Let own boy do the pool jump. I have faith. I mean, he rides dirt bikes, bro. Here's the thing. You're right about him riding dirt bikes, but I'm still not going to let him jump because riding dirt bikes has nothing to do with jumping with your legs. Sure, Dwayne can do a real impressive wheelie on a dirt bike, <laughs> but I'm not going to let him do it. I just won't. I could not live with myself if Dwayne got injured or something or God forbid, like Kent said, oh, hits his head on the pavement, brains are everywhere, smells bad. I couldn't live with myself. Hooked on Funk, uh, very gracious of you. Dollar for a haircut. Yeah, I have a haircut appointment coming up in July. That's when I'm going to finally get to take my hat off again is in July. Ranger man, very gracious of you. Might send you a bill for the damage to my TV when I rage punched it, but don't worry. I found this TV on the curb, so it will be zero dollars. My Oh, perfect, Ranger Man. Perfect. I'm sorry. I don't mean to rage. I don't want you to rage punch you into the... Uh, <laughs> I don't mean you to rage punch your TV. Uh, quick question from Asylum Vapes. Oh, hey, Grim Green, are you still doing the podcast? Yes. In fact, that's something else I wanted to say. I'm going to be doing... Hopefully within the next few weeks, another full grim, another two episodes of the full grim podcast. And it's just going to be probably the most important podcasts that I've ever done, that I've ever, ever done. I'm going to team up with Michelle Mitten from CEI, and I'm going to do an amazing podcast. It's going to, it's going to be everything. I would, I'm highly encouraging everybody, not just for me, not just because I want you to listen to my podcast. It's going to be the most important podcasts I do, full of the most information that I've ever put out there uh, from somebody else. You know, Danielle Jones, she did the uh, the Truth About Vaping uh, series. She did the 510 reports, uh, you know, Vaping's Biggest Enemy 510 reports. And now I found this from Michelle Mitten, and uh, I'm going to do a podcast. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Um, Sexy King Phil, very gracious of you. Colin Mendelson for president of Australia. Look, I don't know where he stands on a lot of other stuff, but I like his, uh, I like his pro vaping. So yes, I will say that. I'll move to Australia. I'll get citizenship just so I can, <laughs> just, <laughs> just so I can vote for Colin freaking Mendelson. Uh, one more from sexy King Phil. Ironically, I quit smoking, uh, from one of my cousins that went back to smoking. If it wasn't for him, I would still be using uh, cigs, cigars, pipe tobacco, and chew. Six years, cigarette-free, vaping saves lives. Inarguable. Inarguable, sir. Inarguable. Ranger man, uh, I had a coworker see me vaping and actually tell me it was worse than smoking. I called BS and told him about the RCP in Public Health England. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, there. I want to set up a website with a real simple address. You know, the Libertarian Party did it for vape.vote. If you go to vape.vote, great website. Everybody go there right now, vape.vote. Not right now, after the stream, vape.vote. I want to set up something like that, like vape.facts, right? And it's just pure science 
presented in a really easily digestible way so that when Ranger Man runs across any other, you know, coworkers that tell him that vaping is worse, somehow worse than smoking, you can say, okay, well, uh, I'd love you to visit this website. It's just vape.facts. Just go there whenever you get a chance and just read some uh, scientific literature on the subject. I mean, I'm not going to argue with you. Just go to vape.facts or vape. something. Facts, vapefacts.net. GeoCities. I don't know. Something. Something simple and easy to set up. I'm bad at building websites. I just, I'm the idea guy, you know? I'm the idea guy and I need people to execute it for me. So I'm bad at building websites, but that's something I would love to do as well. Matching carpet. Very gracious of you. Uh, can't throw out my last empty bottle of Yig. Going to refill it with my next liquid and keep rocking it. I'm also a sentimental SOB. Yig life. Matching carpet. You know what? I, I, I'll get you a bottle of Yig. You were nice enough to send me some gifts, including a very cool knife. I'm going to send you a bottle of Yig. Cool? Just hit me up, Matching Carpet. Bottle of Yig with your name on it. Um, Chris B., thanks for your time, Nick. Now, thank you, Chris B., for being on the front lines and fighting. Um, Marty Steins, very gracious of you. Love you, Grim. Uh, I'm by your side to fight literally. Yes. Yes, I'm by your side. That's the thing. We're we're by each other's side. This isn't this isn't you know, we're all in this together. We're all on the same team, all of us. Regardless of who you like or who you dislike, I will fight to the death your right to vape and free speech and all that stuff from the constitution. Oh, you know the thing. Joe Biden it. You know, life liberty, you know, you know the thing. Uh, British eyes only discord after the vlog, let Dwayne jump in the pool. You stop that. Here's what I'm going to do after this. I'm going to jump in my pool. (laughs) British eyes. I'm going to jump in the pool. Discord after the vlog. Yeah, maybe discord after the vlog. We'll see how that goes. Sprocky lock. Very gracious of you, man. You didn't say anything that you didn't have to. I appreciate that. And vapors haze. Finally, uh, appreciate you being here. Fist bump to you. So I think that's where we're going to end today's episode. Episode? Sure. It's not an episode. Episode of Tuesday, Bro Tuesday. And uh, just don't lose hope. Nobody's fucked. We're fucked for a little bit. But being fucked, I need to stop saying that. I just want us to be motivated to do something. We need to focus that rage in a positive way possible. Exactly an advocate for liberty. Appreciate you. Focus that rage in the most positive way possible. The description of this video will be littered with links about everything we talked about today, including what you can do, where we go from here, the action you can take, tweet, call, emails, snail mails, everything works. Petitions, use every tool in your arsenal. Use every tool in your arsenal and look, I've said this before. They can't run from the science forever. Greg Cunt is going to try. He's (laughs) Greg Cunt is going to try to run from the science. He's going to try like hell, but he can't. You cannot run from the science forever. They cannot run from the science forever. Vaping is already changed the world. Vaping is going to continue to change the world. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming out and. uh, I guess that's where we're going to end this. So uh, anyway, I don't know what to say. I don't know how we're going to end this. I'm bad at ending Tuesday, bro, Tuesdays. Here's what I'm going to say, everybody. Don't lose hope. Keep fighting the good fight because I'll be fighting right alongside you. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Be excellent to each other. Peace. Peace.